everyone, good morning. It, uh, it's not windy anymore. <laughs> you know, as much as I love the wind out here, I think I've had my fill for this trip, just saying. But, uh, you know, I had a pretty good night's sleep. It, it's uh, rained on and off pretty much all night, but it's just a light rain. Uh, it's just barely sprinkling right now, which is really nice. And like I say, there's no wind, which is awesome. So I'm gonna snatch some breakfast here real quick, and then we'll take advantage of this lull in the weather and we'll go see what we can find. Uh, still a lot of rain clouds out there, but they do look a bit thinner than they did last night, so. We'll see what today has has to offer. Um, I'm hearing some goals out there, not a lot, and usually the goals are a little bit more noisy when the bears are actively fishing because they're all fighting over the scraps that the bears are leaving behind. Um, but I do hear some out there, so um, we might might just have some fish and bears this morning, we'll see. They've been pretty slow in the mornings, I've noticed the bears have. Um, I think they like to sleep in, so we'll, uh, we'll see what we get today. Let's get some breakfast though. I'm quite, quite hungry, so uh, I'll get some breakfast. I'll boil my water here and then I'll go cook and eat up on my little mole up there like I usually do. Apple banana this morning. Sounds good to me. So good. It is so good. <laughs> you know, tip for you: if you make your own backpacking meals, your own like oatmeal breakfast packets or whatever it is, if you have apples in there, dehydrated apples, add a little bit of cinnamon and nutmeg to it. So good. It just adds so much more. It's delicious. Um, got some bears over here, about a hundred yards out or so. Uh, it's a female actually chasing a sub-adult away from her cubs. I don't know if you could hear them at all, but um, you know, they're not extremely far out from my camp. And I'm asked somewhat frequently uh, if I ever get nervous or scared camping so much in bear country, whether it's out here in the lower 48 I do a lot of photography, different species in bear country, and uh, I can honestly say that I don't get nervous or scared. There was a time when I first started backpacking in bear country that I was nervous. I would wake up at night to every single little sound, and uh, I was just, you know, nervous or jumpy. But over the years, um, I've just spent so much time observing bears from a distance, learning their behavior, learning what to look for when they start to become nervous or agitated, curious, aggressive, things like that. And so I feel like I can recognize those behaviors very quickly and react accordingly. And it's, it's been great over the years. Um, I, I have had experiences where I've been bluff charged, um, by bears and whatnot, but I've acted accordingly and nothing bad came out, out of the experience. And you know, the experience ended well and for me and the bear, and it's, it's just been fine. So I, I don't feel nervous out here in bear country. Plus I've got gear and whatnot that help keep me safe as well. I've talked a little bit about that in this little series with the bear fence. You know, I bring bear spray with me, and I've got my bear vault, all that stuff that helps keep me safe out here. And honestly, I worry more about 
ticks and things like that than I do bears. But, uh, you know, as a single person, as an individual out here in bear country versus, you know, being in a group of people, you do have to act a little bit differently towards bears than you would if you were in a group. Um, you have to be a lot more cautious just because bears do get much bolder around individuals than they do groups of people. So you do have to act a little bit differently and react differently to bears as a individual out here. But again, a lot of that practice and experience has just come from being out here. And, you know, if you're looking into starting backpacking in bear country and doing a trip like this or, you know, whatever it is, I do highly recommend that you go um, with multiple people rather than on a solo trip like this. But again, I've not to rationalize or justify or anything, but I have spent a lot of time observing from a distance, just learning about bear behavior. And I've got a lot of practice in these areas with these bears. So I do feel comfortable at this point as an individual out here with these bears. But uh, if you're new to bear behavior, new to backpacking, things like that, I do recommend that you go out in a group rather than as a individual, but you can do it very safely um, as an individual as well. And I hope I've been able to show that in these, these videos and my other video, excuse me, other videos that I do. So I'm gonna finish this up, go see if I can find some bears. Got some really menacing rain clouds coming in again, so I wanna see if I can get those bears before the downpour starts and uh, see if I can get some, some stuff this morning.
What an amazing day, holy cow. Let me close this up real quick. <laughs> Getting windy out there again. Oh my goodness. So, today was just absolutely amazing. Uh, I went out uh, this morning after I checked in with you, and I spent most of the day out with some bears, a couple of them out on the tundra, just kind of wrestling around. That's how I finished my day, just barely. But uh, yeah, the majority of the day I spent with some bears at a couple different fishing spots as they were fishing obviously and it was just phenomenal uh, so my goal of this trip my main goal of this trip has been to get video footage of bears fishing uh, and hopefully slow motion video footage just because I love that slow motion and fishing I feel like is one thing that just would do really well in slow motion where they're running through the water pulling fish out and the fish are wriggling. I think being able to capture that in slow motion would just be amazing. So that's been my primary goal of this trip so far. You know, I've got a lot of pictures from over the years of bears um, fishing. You know, I've, I've got a lot of images of that stuff. And then last year when I came out, my goal was to get video footage of the bears fishing. And uh, the fishing activity it was just so slow and there were all these moms and cubs running around so I really capitalized on that last year but this year I'm finally getting some video footage of these guys fishing and it is just incredible uh, there's some videos I'm gonna throw them on my laptop just because I uh, want to blow the video up a little bit and take a look at it just because I'm really excited about it. So I've got to dump my memory cards anyways on my uh, little hard drive that I've got here just because they're all full, which is a great thing. And so once I dump those, I'm gonna pull some of those videos up on my laptop and take a look. Uh, if you can tell, it's getting quite windy again. Uh, the wind had died down for most of the day, which the bears really seemed to like because there were a lot of bears out until the wind started picking up again. Even though it was rainy and whatnot today, uh, off and on, the bears were out for the most part, which again was awesome, which is why I spent most of the day out there. But uh, now that the wind's picked up, all the bears just kind of disappeared. I mean, there's still some of the bigger males out there just kind of sitting in the water, not doing much. But a lot of the other bears have just kind of vanished. So, uh, I thought I'd get back here and call it a night um, just because, yeah, that was an amazing day and I need to uh, need to get that those memory cards dumped on my hard drive and whatnot. It's, it's getting pretty late anyways. So I'm going to do that and uh, finish my night off taking care of some of those computer things and then maybe read a chapter of my book and go to sleep. Uh, the wind that's coming in, it's coming from the complete opposite direction that it's been blowing this whole trip so far. Uh, the last 10 days or whatever it's been that I've been out here. Um, it's literally the complete opposite direction so I hope that doesn't mean that it's blowing the storm that just passed through back through again. <laughs> I don't know if that's possible, but I'm really hoping that's not what's going to happen. But it's uh, looking pretty bad out there right now as far as rain clouds go and this wind's really picking up. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm excited to get this stuff on my laptop, so I'm going to cut this off and uh, I'll check in with you in the morning. Look at that, that is incredible. I love that slow motion, shaking that fish, that is awesome. Oh, and there he shakes him again. God, oh, that is so cool. That is exactly what I was hoping for this trip, with stuff like that. 
All right, I'm gonna check some others out. I will see you guys in the morning, and uh, yeah, sleep well. This wind is absolutely insane. It snapped one of the lines on my tent. I need to go out and fix it, but it's so strong. It just snapped one of those lines. The stake didn't come out, luckily, but uh, yeah, that line just snapped like a piece of thread. So I need to go out and fix it. I've got some paracord I'll fix it with. Hopefully all will be well. It is crazy though. This wind is absolutely nuts. This is crazy. You probably can't even hear me. It's literally at the point where I've got, I'm laying on my back and I've got my feet propped up against the side of the tent because it is so windy. I don't know if you'll be able to see. This is crazy. This is by far the worst storm I've ever been in, out here or anywhere, I think. It, uh, the wind's so strong, it even pulled apart one of the seams on my tent. And so I had a little bit of duct tape, but uh, it's not holding I mean, it, it's, it's not holding as well as I would like, so I don't know. We'll see how long this lasts. This is, this is crazy though. It's been about 20 hours now, maybe 21 now, but uh, yeah, this is absolutely insane. I don't know what I'm going to do tonight when it comes time to go to sleep because I can't sleep like this, not that I'm gonna sleep anyways. <laughs> this is just crazy. I've never experienced anything like this before. What a crazy night that was. Uh, I got maybe an hour and a half of just like dozing off, on and off of sleep. Um, so if I'm a little incoherent, I apologize. Um, the rest of the night was literally just spent holding the tent up, just trying to keep it together. Um, the wind's so strong, it's literally just pulling the seams apart at this point. Um, so I pulled the footprint from underneath the tent, the tarp that goes underneath the tent, and I've got it over one of the seams, but the seam just ripped on the opposite side and uh, moisture is starting to get in now. You know, this tent for years has been wonderful, but it, it's older and it's not made specifically for 
for wind like this. There's special tents that you get for wind like this, and this isn't one of those tents. So um, at this point, I had to make a really hard decision this morning. Uh, I called my pilot. It's still really early, and I think I woke him up. I feel bad, but I called my pilot, and uh, he's checking to see if he can get in today to pick me up, because at this point, it's a matter of safety. Um, and you know, the last two nights I've gotten like an hour, hour and a half of sleep, and I, I can't keep doing that the next four days. Um, yeah, and I don't want to do that the next four days. I love it out here, but I'm not out here to sit in a tent trying to keep my stuff dry. That's, that's not why I'm here. I'm here to photograph bears, and I haven't been able to do that in the last couple days because I've been worrying about gear. So, yeah, I made the hard decision, called my pilot to see if he can come pick me up. He's checking the forecast to make sure he can even get in. And then he's checking his uh, schedule to make sure he can get in as well. But uh, I'm going to start packing my stuff up and just getting it in my backpack at least. That way it's just easier to contain and keep dry. And if he can't come, I can always unload my stuff again and uh, figure something out with my tent. But yeah, at this point it's, it's a matter of safety and sanity for me, so um, I'm going to uh, start packing up, unfortunately, and I'll uh, wait to hear back from my pilot, see if, see if I'll be picked up today. Um, just because this weather, it is so dark out there. It's just like black, black clouds out there. Um, it is just so dark. And so, I mean, the storm's not, not going anywhere quick, and it's already been, at this point, I think it's 34 hours that it's been going, and it's just, doesn't seem to be stopping. So, I'll keep you updated. It might not be on this video, but I'll let you know what ends up happening. I don't know, maybe it'll clear up magically, and I'll be here the, the next four days, like I was planning. Who knows, we'll see, but um, yeah, I'll keep you updated. Thanks for, thanks for hanging in there with me. It's been quite the adventure this, this year. <laughs> amazing trip that was. What a great year out there. Surely an adventure. I thank you so much for following along with me and hanging in there with me through all that rain and wind. What a crazy adventure it was out there this year. I'm back home safe and sound thankfully and it was quite the adventure getting home. Last time I checked in with you guys I was in my tent. I had just called my pilot and uh, he was checking his schedule, checking the weather to make sure he could even get in to get me and after quite a while he was able to get in and uh, pick me up. I had checked in with you, I was in my tent, the seams were literally ripping apart in multiple places. I was packing my stuff up because moisture and rain were starting to get in and get all my gear wet. I was able to keep the majority of my gear safe, all of my camera gear safe thankfully, and uh, I was able to tough it out on the tundra in the rain and the wind until my pilot was able to make it in and get me and uh, he was able to pull us out of there safely quite a stressful flight coming out of there but let me tell you those bush pilots they're the real deal on the flight back I talked to my pilot for a little bit and he said in all of his decades of flying out there and all the crazy weather he said he's rarely seen a storm with that much strength uh, just the strength of the wind and the duration of it as well. He said he's rarely seen a storm below that strong and for that many days in a row. And so he was quite surprised at how strong it was when he got out there to pick me up. But uh, overall, what an amazing trip and I'm so glad that I made it home safely and soundly and that my gear did as well. Now, I never like ending a trip that way. Early for one thing, but also just so abruptly. I'm the kind of person who likes taking his time saying goodbye to a location. I like taking the time to soak it all in 
go visit all the wildlife one last time and give them a, a proper goodbye. And I didn't get that this year, but that's okay because I'll be back next year and I've got all the fun video footage and all the content that I was able to capture out there this year. Now, I may be home safe and sound. My tent, not so much. But honestly, I'm kind of grateful for how things turned out this year. You know, for years now, I've been using this tent and I absolutely love it. And uh, I'm actually gonna set it aside. I'm gonna do some repairs on it so I can continue to use it in the future. But like I say, I'm pretty, pretty happy uh, with how things turned out this year in kind of a weird roundabout way. This tent is not made for the conditions that I faced out there uh, this year and sometimes even in previous years, but I've been putting off getting a more expensive tent that can withstand those insane weather conditions that I oftentimes experience out there. And so this tent ripping was kind of like a blessing in disguise. And it's going to force me to get a better quality tent, a tent that can withstand the wind and that rain out there. And uh, honestly, it's just going to be a huge help for me in future years. Some years with the wind blowing like it does out there, because this tent isn't rated for that weather, I tend to stick to camp to make sure that my tent doesn't rip like it did this year and that my things don't blow away. But with the tent that will be able to withstand those conditions out there, that means I'll be able to spend more time out with the bears even in the most insane storms and weather conditions that I sometimes experience out there. So everything that happened this year, I'm actually really grateful for how it turned out because again, as much as I love this tent, it's gonna force me now to get a tent that I can rely on more so when I'm out in conditions like that. So this guy, I'm gonna set him aside and uh, do some repairs on him in the coming weeks so I can use him for more mild weather camping. <laughs> Now at the beginning of this trip, I mentioned that there were some things that were going to be a little bit different this year. And honestly, this trip turned out a whole lot different than I had planned for. But some of the things that I had planned for were one, that solar panel that I mentioned. This thing was amazing. Even in that weather out there, those overcast skies on such a constant basis, this thing kept my power bank charged and I was able to recharge batteries that were dying each day. And it was so nice to be able to use this. I highly recommend this panel. Again, I've got a link to it in the description below. Something else that was a bit different this year than previous years is that I spent a lot more time out exploring. Not only did I explore the immediate area around my camp, but I went further out to find more and better fishing spots where the bears were hanging out in. And it was really good to learn that area even better. I've been going out there for years now, but it's such a huge, huge area. I wanted to learn it even better this year, and I was able to do that, and it was just absolutely amazing. Not only was I able to explore by hiking around on the ground, but before my camping trip actually started out there, I was able to fly around a bit that area and some other areas to look for more bears, to look for other fishing spots, and it was just wonderful to be able to explore that whole area, not just on foot, but from the air as well. What an amazing experience that was. And that kind of leads me into the biggest thing that was different this year. So the biggest thing that was different about this year, and the thing that I'm most excited about, is for years now I've been able to go out to Alaska, backpack, camp around in various areas, and photograph the beautiful and amazing wildlife out there. And I'm able to document that on my camera and share it with you in the form of photos and video. As much as I love putting these extended series together, this year will probably be the last year, at least for a while, where I do an extended series like this. But it's for a good reason. As much as I love sharing this content with you and the adventures that I have on video uh, through YouTube, through my channel, next year I'm so excited to announce that I'll be able to share some of these experiences with some of you in person. Next year, I'll be offering some bear workshops, bear photography workshops with the amazing bears out there and all the other wildlife that I'm able to photograph out there. The ptarmigan, the foxes, the occasional wolf, the shorebirds around, 
all these amazing animals, I'll be able to share those with some of you in person. And for those of you who can't make it, we'll miss you, but I will still be doing videos out there and I'll put those out that just won't be an extended four or five part series like I've done in the past. But I do have some fun plans for those videos and I'm excited to start working on them next year and be able to share them again with you next year. Like I mentioned, I am just so excited to be rolling these workshops out. It feels so good. I've been working on putting them together for so long now. I'm just so excited to be able to roll them out next year and to be able to get back out there to photograph the bears as they fish, as the cubs play, as the adults wrestle around on the tundra. And I'm just so thrilled at the opportunity to be able to share that with some of you guys. Now, if you're interested in signing up for the workshop or if you're interested in getting more details on it, I've got a link to my website in the description below to the workshop page on my website. You can go there, check out additional details, and as always, please, if you have additional questions, just let me know. I'm always happy to answer any questions that you may have. And uh, again, you can sign up for the workshop. You can register for it at that link in the description below. I want to thank you guys for following along on another amazing year out in Alaska with those beautiful, beautiful bears and all the other wildlife out there. I miss them so much already. This year was just fantastic. Even with the storms out there this year, I was able to get so much content that I'm so happy about. I can't wait to throw it on my computer, get it edited, and be able to share this with you guys. What an amazing year I had in such a wonderful, wonderful place. Again, Thank you so much for following along. I always appreciate your support. I hope you guys are getting out there as well, staying safe while you're doing it. Have fun out there. We'll see you next week.